Hey everybody, welcome to Soundcheck. I'm Jen Eckert. We're at the Count Basie Center for the Arts in Red Bank, New Jersey, and inside the center's historic theater. Now on this Soundcheck, you'll hear from singer-songwriter Beth Hart, who brings her raw blues sound to the Basie stage. Now we spoke to her in between tour stops virtually, and Beth, she holds nothing back, both on stage and off. She's open and honest about how love, life, and her mental health journey have influenced her songwriting. Now, in addition to her original songs, Beth's range, it is incredible. You'll hear Beth cover everyone from Etta James to Led Zeppelin. We also talk with a frequent collaborator of Beth's iconic guitarist, Slash. So let's check out this sound check with Beth Hart. Beth, let's talk about your tour. It's called the Thankful Tour. Tell me about what it's been like getting back on the road. Getting back on tour has been so unbelievable and, and it's been life-changing because there were a handful of years ago that I started resenting how much I was working on the road. And when pandemic hit, it made me go, wow, don't you ever, ever again complain about that gift of getting to go out with your family. I mean, that band and that crew, that's my family. And then getting to just get on that stage and share stories and, and knowing that, you know, my story is not just my story. There's so many people that have, you know, similar stories or way harder stories. And we're all there together and we're celebrating being alive together. So yeah, it's just, um, yeah, it's intense. Yeah. If you wanna hold me, if you wanna know me again, if you want to love me, then just take me on. Cause I've been at the bottom. If I don't always start in the back, um, it's my favorite thing to do, though. But just like walking through the back and seeing everybody and seeing their eyes, you know, and it, it's it's very intense, man. It's very, very emotional. You belong to me. Man, it's so good to hug y'all, man. Your shield never wins. Tell You Belong to Me is a song I wrote for my dad and for the woman. When he got out of prison, he met this woman um, that wouldn't let me be in his life anymore. And I think that's why I wrote Tell You Belong to Me, was that that was my way of, you know, kind of standing up as an older woman for that little girl that was, you know, so hurt by that. But yeah, the Tell You Belong to Me song was very an empower, 
empowering song to write. You recently put out a Led Zeppelin album. We're going to hear some of the tracks tonight. I read it was an album you almost didn't want to make. Why? When I got the offer to do the record, I was still in my chill phase. And uh, I said, no, I don't, I don't have the energy and the angst to be able to pull that off. So I said, no. And then pandemic hit and lockdown hit. And that's when I called David, my manager, and I said, please call Rob and tell him to send me everything Led Zeppelin has ever done, live and record. And then send me the tracks that he's already made with the orchestra. And I'll start studying it. And, uh, I'd love to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Let's go back to the beginning. Tell us how you found music when you were growing up in California. What was the first instrument you learned how to play? We had a piano in our house and um, my mom and dad were beginning to go through some pretty heavy duty stuff. And my father, my father who I was really, really close to, did everything with, everything. And um, he had gotten in, he was getting into some troubles and then he was terrible addiction with gambling. So, and then he left my mother for another woman. So all this stuff was going on. And I remembered hearing Moonlight Sonata being played on a, um, a commercial on TV um, when I was playing underneath the den table. I just remember stopping and I started crying. And I was like, oh my God, somebody else knows what this is like, you know? And what it was like, it was like knowing what heaven was like and then heaven gets taken away and everything goes black. I was four at the time. And in the middle of the night, my parents came out because I was playing Moonlight Sonata. And it was like two, three in the morning. And they said, "Uh oh, we got to get this kid into uh, piano lessons. And I remember being five and it's a weird thing. But in my bathroom, I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, I am going to make music and I don't care whether I make money at it or not. If I have to play on the street, I'm going to make music for the rest of my life. That's what I'm going to do. Walk into the bar and I shake off my coat. Pull up a chair and light up a smoke. Where did all those summers go? Guess I'll never know. So barkeep, let's give it a go. Pour on me a dream and play me a tune and I'll get along just as long as I have a song. I sit by the church and I hear children sing. I like to pretend they're singing for me. But memories and melodies and words that made me cry. Now they have all abandoned me. Sit back and watch me die. So pour me a dream Then play me a tune And I'll get along Just as long as I have a song But the river is wide And the ocean's so deep And the harder I try the faster I sink into the rich of the dark, the cheapest of tricks. I've lost the fire, still I'm sharpening my wick, but it's just smoke. And that's all. Just as long as I have a song I'm alone And that is how I get along Tell me what it's like collaborating with Slash. Oh my God. Okay. So I was so nervous, so nervous. Oh my God. And the thing is, is he's the coolest, most down to earth dude in the world. So he called me himself and I was out on the road. He's like, Hey man, I saw you with Jeff Beck 
And I was just wondering if you wanted to write a song with me on my latest record upcoming. And I'm like, on the phone, I'm like, oh my God, I'm talking this laugh. I'm like, yeah, man, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. He's like, cool, I'll send it over to you. So I'm like working on this song. And then I, I send him the recording of me with on the piano, right? And then singing it. And then I meet him in person and he goes, it doesn't sound anything like the song I sent you. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, dude. That is great. She's uh, one of my favorite um, contemporary blues rock singers. Um, I first heard her sing in the earlier part of the millennium. And uh, she's, her voice just blew me away. She's been through a lot and it, it, it she expresses it in her, her voice and everything with her is just really true blue. So working with her is great because you know, you know what you're working with, you know, um, she's very inspiring. At first I didn't think he liked me because he's so chill and I thought Guns N' Roses, he's going to be like a maniac like I am. And he's not at all. He's so relaxed and mellow. And I remember asking the engineer when, when Slash left the room, I'm like, dude, you think he doesn't like me? And he's like, no, he's just a mellow dude, man. He's a team player. And I'm like, right on. She's just one of the, one of the greats that exists in our time. You know, uh, uh, there's just a handful of, of singers that do anything similar to what she does in this generation. And she's definitely one of the best. Yeah, I love that dude. That is a good dude. That's why that guy is gonna play forever. He's a team player. He's the real deal. He's such a great dude. And you've said you've got an alter ego on stage. Talk about what the stage does for you. Does it, does it free you? That alter ego, I think, is the girl that is who I call my Cobra. So that was my girl when I was little that was my fighter. It would stand up because there's a, a part of me that's way, way, way overly sensitive and has really no sense of self-value and very insecure and uh, and I don't trust people and then I got this cobra who doesn't care and stands up for me and is very strong and I think that's who you know can get up there when I first started when I was young and it was only her and then as I've gotten older now my little girl and that cobra dance together on that stage. Got the lips, got the legs. I was born to die the money sing. I don't worry, I don't shame. Put it on me, I'm the queen of pain. I've been bad, I've been cruel. I'm not sorry, baby, sorry for you. Now you've been open about your mental health. Tell me about your journey and where you are with you and your music right now. So where I'm at in my journey now is I'm basically in a state of acceptance for the most part. I love the luxury of getting older because I think that as you age, or at least I hope so, you start to come into a place of, of a little bit more acceptance of yourself. But, but right now what I'm struggling with is acceptance of, of others. So because I'm learning to finally set boundaries and, and, and keep those boundaries with others and myself, um, I can be a bit overly aggressive about it. So I'm having to take time and work with my doctor and learn to find that balance. And that's gonna take some time.
Mr. Tom Lilly on the bass. Yeah. I was gonna bring up Etta James because you performed one of her songs, Sunday Kinda Love. What's her influence on you? Ron, who I met at high school performing arts. He was in the 12th grade, I was in the 10th. He basically saved my life and he brought me into his family. I was into Big Joe Turner at the time and I was playing it a lot in his car and he pulled it out of the tape, you know, cause this is back when we had, you know, tapes, right? Cassettes. And he pulled it out and he threw Big Joe Turner out the window and he goes, you need to listen to this. And he put in Etta James, Blues in the Night, the early show. There's an early show and a late show, and it's a live recording. And she's probably in her 40s at the time. I heard that, and I couldn't stop listening to it every single day for about seven years. I mean, that's just all I listened to. I love to laugh. A Saturday night. And I like to know. If it's more than love at first sight, I want a Sunday kind of love. Mm -hmm. I want a love that's on the square. Can't seem to find somebody, someone to care. Now I'm on the lone, lone road that leads to nowhere. I want a Sunday kind of love. Ooh, I do my Sunday dreaming. And oh, my Sunday scheming. Every day, oh yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to discover a certain type of lover who will show me, show me the way my arms are need. I need someone to invoke to keep me warm. When Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays grow cold Hey, I need love to last my whole life I need a habit and hold it Now I want a Sunday kind of love I meet young artists and they say, give me some advice. One of the things I always love to say to them is this, number one, is you don't ever let anyone else place your value for you. So whether you get an applause or a boo, whether you get signed or not, that has no basis on your value as a person or as an artist. So I said, the win, the success has already happened. You were born with something you love to do. It doesn't matter what that is, being a teacher, being a mother, being a gardener, being a pianist, being a singer. It doesn't matter. If you wake up in the morning and you're alive and you have something you're passionate about, that's the ultimate success right there. Well, as you can see, best versatility on stage to go from a full out rock show to a pared down acoustic performance, along with her covers, truly shows what a powerful and dynamic artist she is. We want to thank Beth for sharing her story and her music with us. We hope it inspires others. That's all the time we have. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you here for the next Soundcheck. Baby, you've been gone a while. I need you here to make me smile. Baby, come back to the shoe shack. Still got your thunder, it's on the wall.